Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm still cruising across the Pacific Ocean, making our way back to Australia. And we have about three days, I believe, of this. So we're on the second last day of our journey. So I'm stitching again, and I'm still working on my little squirrel. I finished the tail like I thought I would, but then I sort of picked up the threads again the next day and just started stitching around his nose, his whiskers and his eye. So I sort of just, I did a little bit more work in around his back, just with some little stitches. You probably can't see real well. There's a little bit better light. I've got a light over the settee just to my side here and it is shining back towards the camera. So it's not too bad of light this side, but it does get a bit dark over here. So I do apologize. Um, then once I sort of finished fiddling around with this little squirrel, I started working on foliage because I thought, well, what else am I going to do for the next few days? I've got um, uh, Percy to stitch down because I filmed a video yesterday, his next stage, but I just haven't got back to him because the little squirrel is um, sort of commanding my attention at the moment. So I started fiddling around with some different threads and these, some of these were sitting out because of Percy, the uh, peacock piece. So I just sort of this morning added some fly stitch, this particular thread with this gold metallic wound through it, which is through Percy's feathers, was sitting here. I have a little bit left and I don't need it again for Percy. So I started couching down that. I then pulled these little, um, beads out that are mother of pearl and I've always used them as pebbles and I thought maybe I could use the thread that I stitched them down with and do a series of strokes with it to create more of a floral effect. Can you see all those little strokes? I then had in amongst my beads that I packed a dark blue, this one here. I use this guy a lot in my Roxy Christmas advent calendar, which was all blues. So I thought being that I'm over here in the blue section of this piece, I popped a few of those in. Then I just started back filling it with some white little seed beads that are pearlized. And I thought I might as well have a play with some threads. So I started putting French knots through there but really loose ones. And then I guess the reasoning for all of that is this is blue and my little squirrel is those silvery tones, but I mustn't forget that through the entire piece is this theme of the gold flushing through. So I figured that where he's sitting in the garden was an opportunity to bring a bit of that gold into the piece. So that's where I'm at. I also had put this little element, this gold little piece of doily embroidery here weeks and weeks ago. So I picked out a bluey silver and just started popping a few little lazy daisy stitches, a little flower there. I guess I'm building up a garden around him in the themes of the background, but also dragging the gold from further in the piece. So that's sort of where I'm at. So I thought I'd turn the camera on. I need to take my bracelet off because it's clinking on the table and that will be thoroughly annoying you by the end of this video. I must say my husband's sitting on the bed behind me. He is researching tail um, animals. If you've been on a cruise before, the cabin stewards that make your room up each day often make characters for you to um, be greeted by when you come back to your room. And this morning we got a monkey. So you, when we were getting ready to leave, we had the bright idea that we would um, make a towel creature for him. Now, being that I've got supplies here, we shouldn't have too much problem getting a face of some description. I'm, I'm not sure if I have buttons, but I did tell my husband I could always remove a couple buttons from his shirts that are with us. He didn't seem to like that idea, but I'm sure we could come up with something. I have reasonably large beads. There's some gold ones here that probably could do 
for some eyes at a pinch. So while he was in, while I was in the shower, my husband Googled towel animals, how to make them, and the monkey come up. And we remembered having a monkey years ago on another cruise. So we thought he seemed quite simple to make out of one towel. We get back to the cabin after lunch. What have we got hanging? But a monkey. So the monkey is out and Gaz is sitting on the bed researching what other animals we can potentially create. So stay tuned on what we select and how that how that plays out for us. What could possibly go wrong? So um, I might just work through everything I've done so far and add a little bit more while I fill you in on our latest adventures. Not that there's a lot happening because we're sort of on sea days, they call it, where no land, entertained purely by the boat's activities. And we're sort of at the stage where we've done most things that interest us. So all that's really left is rock climbing, skydiving, dodgem cars, learning to surf on a flow rider, all of which do not interest us. Heaven forbid I was to hurt my wrist and be unable to stitch, so that's not gonna happen. So we're really down to not much. There is trivia every couple of hours. So we have been attending a little bit of trivia. They did have a watch sale down in the main promenade area about an hour ago that we happened to stumble by and um, two watches caught my husband's eye. Now, if you recall back, if you've watched our videos for a while, you watched my videos for some time, you remember we had a break in um, and our house was ransacked and we lost quite a few bits and pieces. Well, my husband did lose a few watches. So he does collect the odd watch if he sees something that catches his eye. And he actually found two and you know those discounts where they're extremely expensive and then they say oh it's you know up to 75 percent and it turned out it was nearly 75 percent the discount which brought them down to a really reasonable price so you just have to wonder don't you when they start so high and then bring you down to a price that probably the watch would be sold at normally maybe i'm a bit cynical but you know one suspects these things. There was um, two that caught his eye, so he's just checking them out now to make sure they work and they're not, you know, broken or damaged because it's a bit late to, you know, return them if we find that there's a problem. So he's just sort of having a bit of a look over them, make sure that all the mechanisms work and things like that. But, um, it's a bit tricky because we were actually yesterday sitting at this little cafe that is on this promenade. They've, I'll start again. They've got this promenade on one of the levels, which looks like you're walking down a street, maybe in New York or back streets of a city. Off to each side of it are all of their shops and there's cafes, restaurants, shopping opportunities, uh, an art gallery. So you really do feel like you're going for a stroll through a city and um, down there is a Starbucks. So we're often down there getting a coffee or across from the Starbucks is one of their cafes. And there is free pizza um, for, I believe it's 24 hours, isn't it Gaz? Yeah, it's 24 hours, can you believe it? 24 hour pizza for free, as much as you can eat. And then to the side of that section is like a mini deli so you can get cold drinks you know when they make uh, a lemon cordial or a fruit juice or something ice water then they've got a cabinet of bistro -y sandwiches cakes slices things like that all free 24 hours so you can imagine at all hours you can sort of pop in there so we're often in there just after midnight getting a drink and a slice of pizza before we head back to the retire for the evening so it's been sort of part of our little routine across from it is the starbucks so in front of these two businesses, they put out these tables each day. So it might be handbags, discounted scarves, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, we come wandering past to get ourselves pizza pizza for lunch. 
because we've sort of been skipping the evening pizza. It was getting a bit much, as you can imagine, to digest pizza every night. So we haven't had it for a few days. And um, we come trotting through thinking, piece of pizza for lunch. We've been skipping the buffet completely at lunch because also too much food. Have a good breakfast and have a good dinner is sort of our theory now and don't eat anything the rest of the day. So just not doing enough to you know, warrant it. So where am I heading with this story? The watches, we're coming back, spot the watches straight away. It's like a moth to a light for a certain somebody. So we had a good look and then he says, oh, before I make any decisions, I'll just dodge off to the loo. So he steps away. I walk off to an art auction that's in the gallery, but it had just finished. So they're sort of just telling a bit of a story about Picasso and then it was all over, which sort of suited me anyway, because I figured Gaz would be back from the toilet. So we could then look at watches and dead set, they're packing up the watches. So I'm a bit of a panicker. Like if I think I'm gonna be late to the buffet, I panic. I, I'm just about in full, <laughs> I'm just about in full. <laughs> I'm just laughing here because my husband teases me all the time. He's like, we're gonna be late for the buffet. There goes Skeeter, she's gonna be running towards the buffet, <laughs> grabbing plates. <laughs> He's giggling on the bed and I'm about to lose it. So sorry guys, but you can picture it. Multiple plates in hand, panic, panic um, buffet gathering. So I've got a selection of all sorts of goodies, creating a mini buffet on all my plates, just in case I miss out. So I started to behave in that manner to the watches. And there's these poor guys, these two guys, packing these watches into a box, just doing their job. And I'm like, don't pack them away. My husband wants to have a look at them. We've only just missed it by a minute, you know, just creating a scene. My husband, he's cool as a cat. He does not get phased by such stuff. And he's chatting to the chap beside him. And I'm like, guys, guys, they're packing the watches. <laughs> get a watch, get a watch. <laughs> and he's still chatting to this elderly gentleman. I'm like, what's wrong with you? The watches. <laughs> can't look around at my husband he's getting himself laughing and now I'm losing my stuff so anyway <clears throat> hold it together briefly he um, comes to the realization <laughs> that he needs to make a decision he had luckily looked at a few and none beknowns to me not knowing whatever they're saying is he had sort of caught his eye on a couple anyway and I knew one was the Batman watch. There's this gorgeous Batman watch. So um, they were packing them up. So <laughs> I've got this young fella by the neck. <laughs> Gaz has wandered off to peruse the left ones on the table. And I've got this young lad by the neck saying, there's a Batman watch, there's a Batman watch. So he's rifling through boxes, pulling out watches. It's not there. And I, I could see there were more you know, watches that had the Marvel and DC comic logo on it. So I knew he wasn't trying too hard because he'd pretty much like go away crazy lady. And I thought, oh, well, too bad. We've missed out. So I whiz around to the other side of the table where they had a mixture of all sorts of stuff. I whiz around to the other side of the table and say, oh, there's the, it must have sold because the young fella said it sold, madam, it sold, madam. Like he was trying to get rid of me because I was, you know, causing a scene allegedly so we continue around the table and dead set on the other side of the table there's still heaps of watches so and what's sitting there another display of these um collectible marvel batman things you know so there it was sitting there it was all good nice and calm and then i, th I was watching these two young boys that i costed and it looked like they were actually just packing up the display from having it at both ends of this area to just the one end. So they weren't going anywhere with the watches. They were just relocating them. So I calmed down and let Gary wander around and he selected a second watch. And it was one that caught our eye prior to this whole shenanigans that went down. So he's left with these watches and yes, they were heavily reduced but still, you know, probably the price you would expect them to be, not the price that was on the ticket. So there was quite a few men there 
you know, having a good look and picking up a few. So they're really cool. I'll uh, grab them at the end of the video and show you them. They're probably not uh, our tastes, but um, they're very, very cool. So that's the start of a few nice pieces for the stolen watches from our break-in. He's actually had quite a lot of watches stolen over the years because I think I told you we've had three break-ins over the last 20 years and each time they grab some more stuff. So he's had a lot of watches disappear in his time. So I guess we've bought some more for them to steal next time. Isn't that how it goes? So I've, in all that Yibby Yabba, I've stitched down, I've couched down that decorative thread and then stitched on one more pearl pearl buttony stony thing so happy with that what I will do but is I need to put some little leaves on it so I might just use this neutral fawny color and um, pop a couple lazy daisy stitches either side of those stems just to give it a little feature or do I need a lazy daisy what what else could I do I sort of want them to be reasonable chunky look let's try lazy daisy first what about I'm just thinking what about an open lazy daisy someone was doing them the other day on a video I think it was you Christine where you you sort of do the stitch from the other way and instead of having your two points where you start the stitch at the same location I don't even see if you can see that you probably can't I'm wasting my time here teaching you a stitch you put a gap then you complete your lazy daisy but then the end of it is open like that and I thought oh I haven't done them for a while I shall find a spot to do that. So thanks, Christine. I've been able to watch all the YouTube videos, so it's been great. I just um, put my buds in my ear and I can get all of the videos. So it's been really good. I don't know what I would have done without the internet package. Yeah, that's, that's gonna work. Now, keeping them fairly close, you should see this one because the background will be a bit easier to see the colour change. So it's the same principle as the Lazy Daisy, but just gives you that open fault. Stitch. Just got to concentrate because you're so used to closing that stitch together great little stitch for something a bit different I'm trying to keep them very whimsical this piece so it's not like I'm creating an actual flower that exists it's more of a abstract piece using these stitches so have you found a tail animal yet Gaz? no not yet I found in one of our cupboards over the top of our bed there's like if you picture a caravan and you have your bed and above them would be some overhead cupboards that's sort of what it's like there's a bag in there with a complete set of towels in it so it must be in case of emergency there's, they know that there's one set of towels in the room yeah that's pretty good happy with that I do have a bit of thread left on my needle so we might just find a spot to use that so we've got some towels We've got a range of towels. I think there's two large ones and a couple hand towels. So we can at least make potentially a animal. We've just got to find something that's within our skill set. Stay tuned. I think I've shown you most of them that we've had so far. Probably only enough thread here to do one French knot. So when I'm doing the French knots, I'm keeping them really loose. The first one I did was quite firm, you know, what you'd consider a traditional one. But this one I'm letting it sort of untangle a little bit so that it's quite chunky. 
because there's a lot of um, bulk around there. Not only are you fighting against the cheesecloth, you're fighting against a heap of pearls that I've put in there. So any French knots, I sort of need to have them a little loose. I did consider doing some turkey work down here because I haven't done any of that for a little while, but because this piece is stored on a rolled up uh, on a bobbin, tends to flatten the turkey work. So when you pull it out to show someone, you've got this weird squished up stitch that needs titivating up for it to look right. So I haven't, I haven't gone down the track of adding some turkey work. So we're finished with that thread. I don't think I'll do any more blue up in here. So I don't need that. This was a thread I bought with me and there's only a little bit left. So I thought I might as well use it. It was left over from a needlework kit from years ago. So I don't know if it's Anchor or DMC. The colors don't match anything. It's got a symbol written there, an N and 188. So I suspect it's from a needlework kit. So I'm just going to leave it at six strands and down in amongst those beads, I'm going to do a few more very loose three wrapped three wraps of a French knot so that I get it to stand a little. And because it's the darker tone out of all of those creamy fawny colors, I'm keeping my knot to the bottom so that it's sort of starting to form maybe the ground. I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking this, but it's sort of the clods of soil is what I was thinking. Now, I haven't done anything down here with these plants. Whoops, that's a colonial knot, they're doing French knots. So I might just drop a few down here. There is another level to the ground because of the way I've done the stems of those three flowers. Probably need to get my ground at a bit of an angle there. That makes sense. It's probably the last knot I'll get out of this little piece. Even if I leave, oh, I'm going to get one more. Might as well use every last bit. Oops. Every last little bit of thread. There we go. So I now just need to re-thread. How are we going for time? 20, 23 minutes. Plenty of time. What else can I tell you about the adventures on the cruise? We saw a pretty good show last night. They were three chaps that have traveled the world and they sang a lot of the um, Frank Sinatra, uh, Rat Pack, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin. Who was the other guy, I guess? They special, a little bit of Elvis, but he sort of wasn't Sammy Davis Jr. There was one Elvis song, but that was only because they were sort of talking about those three men and their time in Vegas. And the day before we'd watched the Elvis movie. So they did do Viva Las Vegas. So pretty good, pretty good. They put on a very, very good show. You could tell they've been together as a group for a long time. There was just this respect amongst them. There was this, you know, they put their hand on each other's shoulder all the time as they were sort of, um, greeting or thanking subtly whether it was all stage they probably fight like anything behind the curtain but I certainly felt like they were really good mates and they had been singing uh, for a lot of years together which is what they sort of said in the intro that they'd been um, for years in Vegas and they apparently opened for Michael Bublé when he did a concert 
in Sydney. So they're certainly, they know what they're doing is what I'm trying to say. And they looked like they had a lot of respect for each other. But who knows, they're performers, aren't they? At the end of the day, might do some pistol knots here as well. I sort of feel like that edge needs to taper off a little with something other than just French knots. Being it's a whimsical garden, I can get away with a few more odd little things. Okay. That's pretty good. So you're probably wondering how the choir is going. Well, the choir is not going so well. I missed a rehearsal and I'm gonna blame stitching. I finished filming a video for you guys and I had 15 minutes or so to tidy up and head down to the choir rehearsal. But I started fiddling, the lace drew me in. I started mucking around with that piece and before I knew it, that 15 minutes that I had, had turned into 20 minutes and I sent a message to my husband and said, I've, I've missed the choir. So now I'm in a quandary. Do I go to the next one, which is later today and sort of blend in, having not received any instructions of what to do for one whole rehearsal? Or do I say, no, you give up. You've probably missed the opportunity, so. Yeah, so stitching got in the way of singing. Can you believe it? I bet you're not surprised. It's sort of one of those things you start, you pick up a piece and suddenly an hour goes and you're like, oh, well, I was going to go and do whatever, but you've just wasted an hour fiddling around with threads and fabrics. So I'm a, a little, um, little concerned my career in singing. <laughs> has come to an abrupt halt. So stay tuned. Do I resurrect my career? Or do I chalk it up to, it was fun, the one rehearsal? And um, probably stitching is more interesting. We'll see. We'll see. I think there's a rehearsal today and a rehearsal tomorrow and the actual performance is tomorrow at night. So I don't know. I'm gonna be the kid that never turns up and then when he does finally turn up, I get a roasting from the teacher. That's what could happen. So who knows what will happen with that choir experience. I know you're all expecting great things. Either way, I'll try and film it, whether I'm in it or not is another thing. So at least for those of you who got very excited about the sound of music and all of those great songs, you'll get a, a little snippet. They might sound better if I'm not there. Maybe I was the problem. That clunky sound I could hear through the piece. Now, I sort of feel like I need to pop something. See those pistol stitch there? I sort of think I need to do something there. I might thread up the beads, I think. And um, maybe some little, don't think I'll do the blue ones because they're so big. I hope going along there that distance ha won't, won't um, bite me when we get our next couple prompts because technically that's all I've got in space. I can add on and there are little morsels of pockets around that something could happen. But if it's a big prompt, that's sort of, that's it. The squirrel and him, but uh, we'll see. We'll see, who knows? Try not to worry about the piece and where it goes because we've got no control over the prompt. So we sort of have to wing it when we know more, which is half the fun of the piece. It, it's evolving. But like I said in a previous video, I can always add a piece of fabric in under this lace. I prefer not to because all of my snippet rolls are um, 
36 inches, the whole lot of them. So if I ever want to display them, they'll all hang the same length. So I don't really want to add on. I'd probably consider not doing a prompt on a piece in order to keep the integrity of the whole project. I need these beads out where I can actually see them. That's better. Close that up before they go all over the floor. I was just setting up this table and I glanced down to the carpet and I picked up like four beads. So I don't even know how they got there. So whoever gets this room after us, if the lads don't vacuum properly, they'll be looking at the carpet and seeing beads everywhere. I guess I'll just assume they fell off of a dress. Not a person, crazy person stitching. So that's six or so, I think, five little white beads. I think I need something else. Maybe I bring who what else is in here? That's some real they're pretty cute. I haven't used them anywhere on the piece. They're like a bronzy colour. Does that look odd? No, that looks really good. Where have you lot been? Let's grab a few of those out. They've got a amber. You know when the amber come or that sap that comes out of trees that turns into amber? That's what they look like. So I'm just going to work a few of those back through. I should be doing two stitches per bead, but I'm being lazy. If it was going on to clothing, I might do two stitches now that I've pointed it out, I should do it. If it was going on to clothing, every bead needs two stitches, just in case it sort of comes apart. And even then, I've watched a few videos on people who bead clothing and they tend to every three or four beads come back through the whole lot again drop down then come back up where they were so there's nearly three stitches through each bead but if you were embroidering a wedding dress or something you'd, you'd need to do that you don't want the thread breaking and losing 20 or so beads, especially if they were highlighting an area, it would be a bit of a shame. But these little snippet rolls, it's not crucial. So have you found an animal yet, Gaz? He's thinking an octopus. That sounds hard. How many tails do we need for an octopus? 60. <laughs> he just said 60. He's being an idiot. We're going to have to steal 60 towels. <laughs> All right, I'll go get the towels. It sounds like fun. So I need to run through the corridors of this ship and steal 60 towels to make a massive octopus. No, you're going to have to rethink that. It doesn't sound feasible. These little beads are sweet. I'm going to keep working them right through the hole base because they look really great they've put like a little glistening sparkle through all those knots very very cool I need some more out put those away oh there's some big ones what the hang let's throw some big ones down these were used a lot in also my Christmas Roxy projects. I did the blue, then I did um, champagne sort of tones with the blue. So I'm going to pop a few of them in too. Why not, I say? Yeah, I like 
like that. Gosh, you never know where these pieces are going to go, do you? You just sort of sit down. You just pick up. Pick up a few beads, a few threads, and away you go. Before you know it, you've missed your choir practice because you're too carried away with your needlework. Come here, bead. Why is there a big loop of thread? It usually means I've got a knot. Oh no. These beads are odd too, these guys. They've made them dull one side and shiny the other. So I tend to have to come back and turn them so that the sparkle is to the front. There's like a coating of paint. Now I've unthreaded, there's a coating of paint on one side of the bead. Better check the time because I don't oh know. We got plenty of time. I might just finish that thread off. Actually, it's getting a bit short. It's only gonna um, thread. I was sitting this morning looking at my breakfast, and let me tell you, and it was an array of veritable goodies. I had a small serve of bechamel. Uh, muesli and it had grapes cut in half and grated uh, apple and sultanas and it just is to die for so I had a small serve of that you're going to be really shocked at how much I had on my plate it has decreased I'm trying to wean myself off of all the goodies but then I had a poached egg some salmon and a hash brown I had a coffee I had um, a small, I'll say small just to make myself feel better, a small cinnamon scroll sitting on the plate and then my husband turned up with a croissant <laughs> which he then applied jam and I thought well got to have one of those too. So I went and got a croissant and I thought he was using a plain croissant because I had seen them the day before around but I couldn't see the size he had because he had rather a large croissant there were these little ones but not these a big one because he'd cut it in half and it was already open and he was applying the jam I thought oh well it must be these big ones and I picked it up and it had um, icing sugar all over it with drizzled with caramel so it was already fully laden and I took one and then opened it up and added jam like it's horrific let me tell you it's horrific behavior <laughs> but it's good so I was looking at this veritable buffet of breakfast in front of me and you can see why we're only having breakfast and we're skipping lunch well we did have pizza today but after the breakfast I'm describing anyway you can see it was a buffet breakfast on the table in front of me and you know what I was thinking in less than 48 hours I'll be back at my own kitchen and be lucky to get an egg on toast. And all I can think about is, oh, I'm gonna so miss not having to cook. And then probably about four hours later, we're in the lift chatting to another couple. And that was the, the one thing that the lady and I were commiserating on is we've got to go home and cook. We're really going to miss having a meal where you can have a small serve of something and then another small serve of something else and you know drift across the table and taste things that you would you know what come out the other night that I had a serve of and I have not had it probably since I was a kid um I've even forgotten all about it moussaka I think that's the word it's um eggplant made into a, a lasagna so the theme was Greece. So when we got there, there was all these gorgeous Mediterranean styles dishes. And then in the pasta area was this huge tray of it. And oh, 
it was so nice. Now that's something I probably wouldn't make at home because I don't think my husband would enjoy the eggplant. He'd pr prefer a more traditional lasagna. So I wouldn't make it. I think I've made it once for him when we were first married and he wasn't a real fan of it. It's, it's an acquired taste, I guess. Especially if you're not a lover of sloppy eggplant and probably prefer more of a traditional lasagna. So yeah, he, um, I had a serve of that and it was so good. That's what I'm gonna miss. Just being able to try different things and just, a, you only need a taste. You can put heaps of things on your plate, but just a little taste. It's a great part of cruising, isn't it? When you get these chefs and cooks from around the world, you know, you just get to try different things. So I'm just finishing off my thread there. I think that's about all I need there. I'm not gonna add anything else, so I will I will cut that. I'm happy with that little corner, little swish of activity there with those little I did want to have a look. I've got a few minutes, yeah. I did want to have a look in amongst my scrap lacy bits to see if there was anything that um Sorry guys, I'm making a bit of noise with my beads. Just want to get it out of the way and get their lids on before there's a disaster. So, and clear the area so I can have a look at these bits of lace that I packed. Because there might be something that I can add the camera's not there it's bumping all over the place so it's not only me it's it's the rocking of the boat what's this it's a timber it's a flower no. oh, i've got one of those maple leaves at the front of this piece i think there's a second maple leaf. Did I put a, yeah, I've got a maple leaf here. So I got two. Oh, I'm tempted to tuck that in there. Oh, I do like that. There's this little flower too. No, too yellow. That would work back here somewhere. Sort of, no, that little flower there could work somewhere. Well, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. I'm just, just uh, poking it around to see. It's sort of, it's the wrong color. Put it away, Karen. Little roses there, but they're similar. No, right. pop that out of the way. I do like that maple leaf for some reason. Yeah, I do like that. What else have we got here? We got another one of those. And I used one there. No. Got a bit of this lace. No. No. What else have we got? Got lots of doily bits. Little half pieces could be tucked in there for interest. Don't mind that. Looks like there's a doily underneath all of that. That's well, a possibility. 
that's too big. I could pinch some of Percy's little pieces. I like that better. Let's take a little Percy rosette. I'm using these for these feathers. I hope I don't regret that because I've now pilfered it. I like that. I like that better. I think it's because it's more subtle. Yep, yeah, that's, that's what we're going to do. We'll put the maple leaf away for another day. How are we going for time? We've got 15 minutes. Husband standing at the end of the bed with his mobile phone watching a video on how to make a what is it? He's doing a dinosaur. <laughs> Can I have a look at a picture of a dinosaur? Just want to show the the um, ladies what caught your eye. Can you just do a screenshot? And then we'll, uh, what I'll do is at the end of this video you will see the dinosaur we made how's that so we'll show you the projected picture the plan and then at the end of this video you will see a dinosaur what happened to the octopus too many towels <laughs> too many towels we couldn't get 60 towels we did the math that's a lot of towels per deck to be acquiring I'm just going to stitch this little medallion off this crochet doily. I could probably drift a few through the whole piece, sort of to tie it in, I guess, but oh, when does it ever stop? I'll definitely miss the next choir if I carry on the way I am. I like it layered in the white lace. That's pretty. It's nice to have some little areas through these pieces where you don't see everything at once. And the more you look, the more you see. So if you do something on your piece and you think, oh gosh, that's disappeared, don't worry about it because you will see it. Especially those people that look at your work and they take time to really look. They're the ones that get all of the benefits of the, the, the depth of your piece there'll be lots that'll just go oh that's beautiful and then run their eyes across the whole piece next piece next piece and they'll miss the detail don't make any noise Gaz he's pulling towels out have you got a picture for me bring your phone over he's got towels everywhere he's into the emergency towel supply from above the bed he's just handing me the phone with a screenshot oh that's a, um, what do they call them? They eat green. I'm just getting the photo, it's gone all wacky. Why won't that? Okay, can you see that? I blow it up. That's what we're making. So he's rolled the legs and now he's just doing the, the body. So that's achievable. So we're gonna work on some eyes. What have they used? Just a piece of black felt or something. I don't have black felt with me. But anyway, we're making a dinosaur. So stay tuned. There'll be a photo at the end of the video. Hand the phone back to Gaz for his reference. Now I'll just finish this. How are we going for time? 10 minutes. So that'll finish this off. And then I'm going to put this piece down because I think I've done enough fiddling. Oh, I've caught the lace behind. Seriously. Oh, I wasn't really caught. I was just twisted up. Thread her up. I was worried about this piece, if you recall, a few weeks ago, that it just wasn't getting enough of my attention. The French garden was just absorbing every bit of me. So I'm pleased that I spent that weekend doing some seed stitch. You know, when I did all that seed stitch through there, and I guess this trip has allowed me to not just stitch a rabbit on and uh, a squirrel on and leave it. This morning I started again on it. And it just adds so much depth to your work. It's just time. 
it's slow stitch for a reason, isn't it? So a couple more stitches and I think, I think we got it. There is literally a dinosaur being created behind me. We're a creative little bunch, aren't we? Bet you'll all be googling YouTube videos now on towel animals. You'll be making a towel animal <laughs> to put on your beds. Let me know if you do, because they would be quite funny. There we go, knotted off. Put that lace away. Just a nice little touch, not too bulky. Just a little morsel in amongst the little squirrely garden on that corner. Okay, guys, I will leave you in peace. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your stitching. And I will attach to the end of this video a photo of the dinosaur, which is lying in bits on the bed. I don't know if it's gone real well, actually. What's is He's making two dinosaurs. One dinosaur. He's giving me, don't touch the monkey. You're not going to pull a monkey to bits to get dinosaur bits. What are you short? I'm going to have to go steal a towel. Don't you look at my towel. He's, he needs one more towel. You use your own towel. I'd like a shower tonight. He's going to pull the monkey to bits. All right, guys, I better go. I think I need to run through the corridors and try and find a, a towel on one of the trolleys that the boys use when they clean out rooms. I could probably make up an excuse to get a towel. Stay tuned. Bye for now. Do you reckon you'll hold his head up, Kaz? <laughs> <laughs> He's eating. He's He's eating. <laughs> what about his tail? What's that supposed to do? It just drags. <laughs> it drags. <laughs> Why don't we try and make a centi he, centipede? He's a bit sleepy. He's sleepy. His legs look squishy too. Maybe our tails are no good. <laughs> That's better. More starch. More starch. Can you get his head up? Mm. Just hold it up. Let to hold him in position so at least we know what he's meant to look like. There you go, everyone. That's... <laughs> I think we need a new animal. All right, stay tuned, guys. I think um, we're back to square one. <laughs> the dinosaur's not doing what it's meant to do. Okay, guys, bye. After multiple tries, we've got this. What's the lump at the front under his chest using that to prop his head up? Looks like he's got a growth. Dinosaur. He's a mutated dinosaur. Can you hide that a little bit? Like you've got his head up right. He's been wrapped a few times because we had to get the towel really tight. He's got his eyes on because we... <laughs> oh, he's losing his head. You see his eyes. We stole them off the monkey plus a towel. It's not bad. It does look like a walrus. You've got to get his tail off the ground too, I think. They walk with their tails up, or is he sitting? He's just relaxing. He's relaxing. You've got to get him to the bench so he can sit there till tomorrow morning. And the moment you move him off the bed, be right. he's going to collapse. Okay, dinosaur's being moved. He's going to the little bench. Oh, sorry guys, it's probably making you seasick, literally. too slippery. <laughs> Falling apart. It could be a swan. We could make a swan. Anyway, that's the end of that, guys. It's not looking like we're going to get a dinosaur. We've got to go back and think about this. See you. Bye.